Good afternoon. And welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please take a moment to silence all electronic devices and let's stand and take a moment to greet each other. <laughs> all of the readings for this Mass can be found on page 1228 in your hymnal, and the music and readings can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like on the OSM Parish app, or click the Sunday worship aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Our gathering song is number 757, Amazing Grace, number 757. be gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. A moment of prologue. This was supposed to be Father Brad's uh, last weekend here, but he's homesick with COVID. So, but he might be watching us, you know, he might be joining us from a distance. So we uh, hold him in his prayers as, in our prayers as, and for a speedy recovery. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to hear the script, sacred scripture readings, let us ask God's forgiveness for the times that we have failed to offer help and friendship and charity to others. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick and part in the sinner, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you hear the cries of the afflicted, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to imitate you in our response to the needs of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant that we may not be wrapped up in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does he rejoice in the destruction of the living. For he fashioned all things that they might have being, and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed humans to be imperishable. The image of his own nature he made them. But by the envy of the devil, death entered the world, and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Drew me clear and did 
not let my enemies rejoice over me. You raised me up and heard my cry. I call to you. I will praise you. Thanks to the Lord, you faithful ones, praise God's holy name, for God's anger lasts but a moment, God's goodness lasts forever. Have pity on me, O Lord, be my helper. You changed my morning to dancing, forever I give thanks. I will praise you, Lord, all my days, for you have rescued. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs, that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more. And whoever has little did not have less. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord, your servant is listening. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. 
When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she, she was not helped, but only grew, grew worse. She heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she had been healed of her affliction. The woman realized what had happened to her, approached Jesus in, in fear and trembling. She fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While Jesus was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside the house, except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? This child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Tilakutha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of about 12, rose immediately and walked around and they were utterly astounded. Then Jesus gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Over the past several months, uh, several have mentioned that uh, they would be going to, they would be traveling to attend high school reunions. And think for a moment and let your mind wander back to your senior year in high school. In the yearbook, beneath your picture, well, there might have been a list of the clubs and organizations to which you belonged, as well as the profession that you hoped to pursue, and maybe even the nickname that you were known by. All those years later, as you examine your life, how many of those youthful plans and goals have been realized? For most of us, including me, life has evolved quite differently than we had imagined. A variety of people and circumstances, some good and some not so good, have shaped our lives and guided our way on a route that was pr probably more circuitous with many more stops and starts and detours than we had expected. Sorry, lost the page. However far our path through life has deviated from our initial youthful goals, there's no need for regret. As we learn from Jesus in today's gospel, good things can happen in the detours of life. And these can be as graced and as fulfilled as any well-executed plan for life. As a writer of the Gospel of Mark tells us, 
a very busy and devoted Jesus was on his way to the home of Jairus, a synagogue official whose daughter was near death. Obviously, death is serious business, not to be trifled with. This being so, the synagogue official was convinced that Jesus could do something for his daughter, and it seemed imperative that Jesus hurry to help in whatever way he could. Despite the urgency of the situation, Jesus didn't make a beeline for the house of the official. No, he allowed himself to be detained by a woman suffering from hemorrhages. He could have argued that he was too busy, too much of a hurry to tend to her needs, but the time he took to, to allow her to touch him and the moments he spent speaking with her were moments of grace, grace for her, and moments of discovery for him. In her, he encountered faith. In him, she met love, peace, and healing, which she so desired. Jesus would invite the synagogue official to, to develop a similar faith. And as the gospel writer tells us, Jesus graced Jairus' faith with the resurrection to life of, her, of his daughter. Changing plans and graciously adjusting his priorities enabled Jesus to heal not just one person, but two, and then many others. His availability and flexibility enabled him to elicit faith not from one person, but from several. Because he was open and sensitive to the needs of others, however and wherever those needs presented themselves, Jesus was able to extend the healing and forgiveness of God to those who would receive them. Jesus' willingness to be inconvenienced and to allow others' needs to set his agenda continues to challenge and invite us to whom Jesus has entrusted the continuation of his ministry. Jesus' experience and the experience of Jairus and his daughter and the inconvenient woman, combined with all nostalgic remembrance of our senior yearbook entries to teach us that God can be just as present in the detours and in the details that we haven't planned. But at times, our sensitivity needs to be awakened to the grace that life's detours can bring us. And so we pray. God of all people, in whose image and likeness we have been formed, awaken within us charity to see the needs of others and, like Jesus, respond with understanding, compassion, and kindness. Help us to realize the grace and opportunity present in the detours of our lives. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us stand now to renew our profession of faith. We'll do so in the, using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. 
Amen. We now lift our prayers to God, the source of healing and wholeness. For Pope Francis and all who inspire us to lives of greater faith and charity, we pray. Lord, amen. That world and national leaders will work to bring about a fair distribution of our planet's precious resources, we pray. Bring an end to the wars in Ukraine and Gaza and to all the conflicts in our world. Give relief to all who suffered the loss of so much, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for parents around the world, especially those who have been separated from their children because of violence, war, or government policy. May they soon be reunited with those whom they love, we pray. Grant refreshment and renewal to all who are enjoying days of vacation and give them safe travels, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We say farewell to Father Brad. We thank him for his service to the old St. Mary's community. We wish him a refreshing sabbatical time us in his future ministries, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that the sick will know healing and comfort, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have died, especially Carol Brisketto, will inherit the promise of everlasting life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in prayerful silence, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of merciful love, you are the source of all consolation. We pray that you hear your people who seek your guidance and protection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today, throughout the, question, throughout the uh, country, uh, there's a special collection taken up for the Peter's Pence Collection. The Peter's Pence Collection enables Pope Francis to respond with emergency financial assistance to the requests from many parts of the world for assistance, especially those who suffer war and oppression and natural disasters. So the baskets will be passed twice. The first time the baskets are passed, please put your old St. Mary's offering in that. And then the second time the baskets pass you, your Peter's Pence collection. There are some special envelopes in the pews for the use for that second collection. And as always, we thank you for your generosity. As our gifts are prepared, let us sing number 826, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, number 826. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand. And precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call. And lest I fall, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and Take my hand, take my hand, breath. 
precious Lord, lead me home. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on. Let me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me Sisters, that our offering may be acceptable to God the Almighty. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. O oh Lord, indeed you are holy. You are the source of all holiness, and we ask you to make holy these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when they had finished supper, Jesus took the cup. Once again, he gave you thanks. And giving it to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have counted us worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Paul and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Join in our voices, we now pray those words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we might be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look then not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to one another some sign of the peace of Christ. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, happy and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be happy. Our communion song is number 1031, Taste and See, number 1031.
I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord. For to me taste and see taste and see the goodness of the Lord oh taste and see me from all my troubles I was set free taste and see taste and see the goodness of Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice which we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Kind of be seated for a couple of announcements. Thank you for joining us in prayer and worship this evening, both in, here in person and those who are joining us from a distance. Uh, please take a copy of this week's uh, parish bulletin. That information is also posted on the parish website 
and also on the OSM Parish app. Please note that due to the proximity to the Independence Day holiday, there will be no Alpha session this Wednesday morning. So uh, we'll see you again the following Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. Uh, we're going to restart the uh, Chosen series uh, beginning on Tuesday, July 9th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we'll be beginning with uh, Season 1. It's that time of year for registration for the Sunday Faith Formation classes, so if you haven't uh, yet registered, and registration is in person, uh, James will be available in the Commons after Mass to assist you with that. Finally, do we have any visitors or newcomers uh, to All St. Mary's? Would you please stand so we could recognize you? Any visitors or newcomers? Thank you. Thank you for joining us for our Mass here at Chicago's first and oldest Catholic parish. I haven't said that for a while, huh? No, I haven't. No, I used to say it a lot, but... Uh, as I mentioned, Father Brad is ill with uh, COVID, so he's not here to uh, say goodbye. So anyway, he sent a message, and I'm going to read, uh, read this to you, so it won't be too long. Uh, I expected this to be my final weekend with you as pastor. COVID had other plans, so sadly I'm at home watching. Uh, since 2020, at Mass's, at Mass's end, uh, I've waved to you uh, at home, and many of you have appreciated that, so I'll be waving for you, I'll be waving back to you uh, this evening. After six years, I continue to pray that all are welcome and not just a slogan here at Old St. Mary's, that we recognize and accept one another with dignity and the needs and the abilities of each person has, and that Christ is bringing us together to discover and use the, the gifts that we have for the betterment of all. I want to thank uh, you for your blessings and challenges. Uh, thank you to my Paulist brothers who have served here at Old St. Mary's uh, and who have filled our Paulist house and served here. And thanks to the deacons who have served with us and to the entire parish staff and the school principals and all the support staff and lay leadership uh, for all that you have done to support our church uh, mission. Lastly, thanks to the, uh, Perry, to the Paulist leadership who affirmed Old St. Mary's as a community with much potential in the faith. As your pastor, this is uh, something I affirm. Please believe in your potential as a community and step forward and find your area of participation. And we welcome the new uh, Paulist leadership team, which is, uh, who are in the area, but they're kind of incognito at the moment, I think. Anyway, Father Bob, Father Dan and Father Rich, and you, they'll all be with you next weekend. If I was with you in person, I would ask God's blessing in a special way on you all. I believe our celebrations together in prayer accomplish God's work for the good of all. Please accept my blessing from a distance and my love, Father Brad. So. But well, we pray for his continued healing. I think he's getting better, but we'll find out. So, The Lord be with you. And may God's blessings come upon us and remain with us always. The blessings of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go forth in the peace of God. As we go forth, let us sing number 758, Lord of All Hopefulness, number 758. Lord of All Hopefulness, Lord of All ever childlike no cast could destroy be there at our waking and give us we pray your bliss in our hearts Lord at the break of the day Lord 
Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose strong hands were skilled at the plain and the lake. We bear at our labors and give us, we pray, your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. Lord of all kindliness, Lord of all grace, your hands swift to welcome, your arms to embrace. Be there at our homing, and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm. Be there at our sleeping, and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day.